Play is at the heart and soul of childhood. They make sense of the world through play. They discover who they are and how they fit into the world around them through play. And if we deprive them of play, they don't get to know themselves well. They don't see how to fit into the world. They don't understand the world because they're not experimenting and discovering and exercising curiosity and creativity. I think that there's a crisis in kindergarten education for a couple of reasons. The standards, the expectations of children are not realistic. So a lot of pressure is being put on children. They're expected basically to do what a previous generation did in first grade. They're now expected to do in kindergarten. Kindergarten in many schools right now would drive you crazy. So kids are in school, they're, um, you know, they've got worksheets galore. They're sitting at desks uh, working on their letter recognition, doing early writing, doing math book kinds of stuff. Kids are confined. And we take away everything that is experiential and hands-on, three-dimensional, multi-sensory, all the ways children learn in an integrated way where the body and the feelings and the mind are all working together, stimulating the brain. That's gone. It's just very much here. There's something really unusual and interesting going on in the upper Connecticut River Valley in Vermont. The Forest Days program is part of this bigger nature-based early childhood movement. Bobby, what do you think the weather will be like today? Things started in Scandinavia in the 60s and 70s with forest kindergarten. You see bones and you see fur. Yeah, and pellets. So it has to be a bird pellet. Yeah, I think it is. Dara's right. But it has teeth. It's a way for kindergarten teachers who have all those demands of public school education to start to remedy the balance between academics and getting kids outside and getting kids to be, you know, more physically active. All right, so show me you're ready to move out the door. You're facing the direction. Have a beautiful morning out here right now. So lucky. Awesome. Can we please, very loud and proudly, Sing our wood song. One, two, three. The forest is a wonderful place filled with frogs and snakes. I want to see the sound and taste. The forest is a wonderful place. When we go down the hill, we'll go to Venture Circle. Drop our bags and go right to sit spots. In the spring of my fourth year teaching, my principal screened the documentary Schools Out, which is about a, a forest kindergarten in Switzerland, where the kids are outside every day 
all, all year. And it was really inspirational to me to see these joyful, independent five-year-olds, the same age as the kids I had in my classroom. As the, you know, as the lights come up in the library, as the movie's over, I say, I would do that in a heartbeat. We started slow and started doing this one day a week program. So now there are dozens of classrooms following the, a similar model, what fits for their program, for their schedule, for their school. Sit on rectangle or on triangle? Triangle. Sit on triangle? Rectangle. Rectangle, Anna. Ah? Uh? Today, one of our activities will be students in a small group using sticks that they find on the ground to create letters and then spelling words. Oh, what letter is this? T. T. Right? And then oh, we could make it into a I became a better teacher inside because of things I learned about my students outside. One of the benefits for kids is this greater physical development. Kids that are sluggish and can't walk to the other end of the playground by the end of the year, they can walk for a mile on a regular outdoor classroom outing. We're looking into this idea that kids being outside, having to measure their own risk, having to figure out whether it's safe to walk across this log or not, that helps them develop this capacity to regulate their own impulses and develop executive function. Everybody says that kids' language development is more extensive as a function of being in a nature kindergarten program. Oh, warm and the there's another one now. It's a baby one. Because there's more space in the woods, kids had more space to be interacting with each other away from teachers and solving their own problems. <gasps> it's amazing to see the different friendships and social things that happen between the groups. Some kids that always play together inside find new friends out here. See how it goes in and then watch it come out. There's a lot of interest in STEM learning, so this impact on science, technology, engineering, and math learning. It looks like STEM learning is really facilitated by kids being outside and solving problems. Another part of that spectrum of learning is the whole child developing a person that is a good learner, that works well in a group, that has empathy, that can stick to a problem and persevere. And there was actually a group of kids that picked up this really big stick and they started carrying it together. And they started yelling, teamwork, teamwork. And it was just the coolest moment because this group of kids wasn't a group of kids that had been hanging out together. A classroom is designed to break down the learning into little tiny chunks. Outside, you have this complexity in which you are learning. I think that offers the kids a way to grow in a new and important way uh, that the classroom doesn't offer. People ask me all the time, but what will the parents say? Personally, I'm really excited. I love the outdoors, I love nature, and I don't care how dirty my kids get, and I kind of believe the dirtier they are, the better. He's very high energy. And I think being outside is great for him. I just do, I just, he's one of those kids, he's, he's hands-on. I hear more about stuff that goes on here on that one day than I hear about any of the classroom. I can't wait to see the differences in the way that this class acts, you know, five years from now when they're heading into middle school compared to the classes that didn't get this experience. Do you want 
The other day I was asking her actually, what do you like about Forest Friday, Parker? And she said, the food. So the first thing we need to do is find some stand. We need a quarter cup of olive oil. We can actually put them in the compost. Yeah. So I find she's more excited on Fridays because she knows she's going to get to spend the day outside. But I also find that she's more excited about being outside in general. The fact that she gets out into the woods and experiences it at least once a week with somebody guiding her through it and showing her things to me is something you can't really put a price tag on. What did we notice today in your spots? I see Eric brought something back, but let's talk first before we check it out. Across the board, parents are thrilled to learn that their kids are tough and that their kids are creative and that their kids are excited about school. What I'd say to principals and teachers is you ought to talk to the principals and teachers at the schools that are doing this because they're the persuasive ones. I think Forest Friday has had a, a great impact on the students in terms of their ability to work together with other kids that, that they might not otherwise work with, their spirit of adventure, and their spirit of exploration. As a result of that, a lot of the other classes took a hold and we have several other classes that go out on a regular basis. Mousy brought some soft things, Squirrel brought things, and they all work together. Kids are so ready to talk about their observations, talk about what they see, um, connect with each other, which can lend itself to mathematics, which can lend itself to examining insects and what they notice. Where probably before the Forest Fridays, there was less of that. There really was less of that. So we have to find other ways to reconnect children with nature. And so there are the forest kindergartens, or there are the one day in the, in the forest, and the, you know, the rest is sort of a balance of indoor and outdoor. Different teachers are trying this in different ways, different schools, recognizing that whatever works is good because children need more nature. That's a given. You know, now maybe two dozen classrooms throughout Vermont are doing forest days, and it's all happened uh, kind of under the radar and as a grassroots movement without a state mandate or uh, any kind of uh, government support. It's just teachers and principals realizing that this is really healthy for kids. Or when Adam and Lindsay started getting crushes on the Simon kids next door, Steve adjusted to our every need. They need to do all of that to really find their way into the world and also to one another and also to the adults whom they love. They, they tend to relate through play to the people and animals and trees and the world around them. Once you start getting out there, your trust in your children and your trust in nature as a resource and as, a, as an environment for good learning, that will come, it will grow, and I, I think before you know it, you'll be outside all day and not wanting to come back in to get on the bus. Relax a little bit with it, and you'll love it. You'll never go back. <laughs> we had a student who joined the class partway through. When he came out with us, he asked, do we get to stay out here? We said, yeah. He said, all day? Yeah. He said, this is the best day ever.
this little boy, after he said, can I sing? And we said, yeah. And so he walked through the woods singing. He was so full of joy at discovering himself in the outdoors during a school day that he needed to sing. So he did, because he could. Vermont PBS, partnering with local filmmakers to bring you stories made here. For more, visit vermontpbs.org.